choir, would you just sing a little bit of that? His name is. His name is. His name is. Would you give the Lord a hand praise if you know that name that is above all other name and his name is what Jesus his name is what Jesus hallelujah would you grab your neighbor by the hand as we have a word of prayer father God in the name of Jesus we come before you this glorious Sunday morning at St. Luke Community United Methodist Church to say thank you. We thank you to Heavenly Father for knowing the name of Jesus. For that name is above all other names. And we ask now in the name of Jesus to Christ that you have your way. Move by your spirit in the word, God. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to stand behind this holy desk. Thank this pastor and first lady and ministers of the gospel. Thank you for the members of this, your church. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, have your way in such a way that you would take me, hide me behind your old rugged cross. Stand up in me in the name of Jesus the Christ. And God, we just believe in faith that there's somebody that does not know you in the pardoning of their sins. On this glorious Sunday morning in Dallas, Texas, you, God, will convict in their heart and their spirit to accept you as Lord and Savior over their life. Hide me behind your cross in such a way, God, that you will speak to me and speak through me. And God, when it's all said and done, you will get the glory. You will get the honor. You will get the praise. Thank you for this woman's day. And we give you praise on this day. In Jesus' name, can we all shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Can we all shout amen? amen? Would you give the Lord another hand praise this morning? First, giving honor to God, I want to thank God for traveling mercies. For traveling mercies. I want to thank God for your pastor, Reverend Dr. Michael Bowie. We thank you for the invitation, sir the kindness and the hospitality that has been shown to me. I want to thank his gracious wife and first lady of your church, Sister Jeanette Bowie. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. I want to thank God for the executive pastor, Benton, who allowed me to sit in his office for a few minutes. I want to thank God for Bishop McKenzie for getting a text from her this morning. I want to thank God for the offices and the stewards and trustees of this church. The ministers of the gospel, I especially want to thank Reverend Marjorie Scott. We want to thank God for her. Reverend Delphine Vassar, not ministers of this church, but we thank God for them AME ministers that are here with me on this morning. Thank you. For your ministerial staff of St. Luke Community United Methodist Church, I want to thank Minister Latasha Roberts for the gracious hospitality, for the introduction, for the fellowship on yesterday. We had a glorious time, and thank you, Pastor. The leadership of the Women's Season Day, and thank you for the kind introduction. Worship participants, the choir, the dancers, and especially Ashley. We want to give God praise for Ashley on today. I want to also thank the assistant, uh, administrative assistant pastor, uh, Sister Carolyn Howard, for how she facilitated everything in me coming. I want to thank those who are connected to the Ebenezer Amy Church family. You have members, Pastor Bowie, whose brother is Brother Sister Maddox. I don't know if they're here at this service this morning or not, but their daughter was a member. Their beautiful granddaughter and their son-in-law were members of Ebenezer, so we are grateful. I want to thank my Ebenezer Church family for their prayers and I especially want to thank my husband the senior pastor of Ebenezer Pastor Granger Brown for his prayers called me this morning and had prayer with me and I thank God lastly I want to give God praise I want to thank you pastor for allowing me to sell some of my books and I want to thank you for those who follow me on Facebook and Instagram and then I want to give God praise for the word of God as we prepare now to hear what thus saith the Lord 
Verse number one of Isaiah 43, six. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they will not overflow or sweep over you. When thou walkest through the fire, <laughs> thou, you, shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon you or set you ablaze. I'm going to stop right there because of the time. Ask your prayers on the sermon subject, your theme, hashtag not forgotten, God knows your name. Would you look at someone and tell them, hashtag not forgotten, God knows your name. You may take your seats. This morning on your Woman's Day, uh, this first service, I, my sisters and my brothers, I don't know but about you, but I must be honest and forthright with you or of where I have found myself as a saved, sanctified woman, as a wife and as a mother, as a grandmother, as a mother in love or mother-in-law, as a sibling, as an aunt, as a minister of the gospel now for 37 years, and as one who has served with my husband and team ministry for just about 36 years. My sisters and my brothers, I don't know how you may be feeling this morning, but if I may be candid and honest, this Woman's Day service, no matter what the gender or age might be, all of us have had to contend with the reality of unusual and unexpected times. We have all had to adjust and uh, contend with the reality of daily chaos and confusion. We all have had to shift at times and make some amends within the context of the times. The truth is that we all have had to make some adjustments as we decide how we may move through and navigate life during these unusual seasons of times. For life and living these days have changed and shifted whether we want to admit it or not. Uh, may I be honest this morning because I am not here on your woman's day to ruffle the feathers of your political persuasion. But uh, I have found myself that there may be some sisters under the sound of my voice who may be willing to admit that on the inside, like myself, you have, uh, uh, have had to struggle within the faith because of the reality of the times. My faith uh, place and my feelings as a woman saved by grace at times have been unsettled. And I am willing to admit this morning that as a, as a Christian woman called by God, there have been times uh, that the very core of me as a woman of God and faith and in the faith that I, 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 I feel sometimes uneasy. And I don't uh, want to ever compromise the core of my being and how God has created us as women, we are innately loving and nurturing and caring creations of God. And I don't want to ever compromise my, my intimate relationship with the Lord and my spiritual integrity of what it means to be godly. I want to remain faithful, focused and fearless in the things of God regardless of what is going on around me. I want my spiritual antennas to remain sharp and in tune with the God of my salvation so much so that when the devil walks in the room, I will know it. I come before you this morning with a made up mind in the faith, deciding in the midst of the unsettledness of St. Luke Community and the United Methodist Church to stand boldly for the things of God and be clear spiritually and confidently that we are hashtag not forgotten and God knows our names. Uh, but sometimes on the journey of faith, you can come to a place where you may wonder, where is the Lord in this? 
You may not agree with me, but for me as a woman, these times have tested and tried me in deep places and have made me wonder. And I've had to have a little talk with Jesus. And, and it's been a little bit more than a talk. It's been a, been a long, lengthy prayer. There are sometimes things that I have prayed for privately for my family and ministerially, the issues that plague us all socially, economically, and politically that I am still waiting for the Lord to shift some things, to change some things, and for the Lord to transform some things. Stay with me this morning. The journey as a black woman is unusually connected. I am, is usually connected to you. I am St. Luke uh, because I was born in Nantucket Island, Massachusetts. I grew up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I was raised by my parents that were from Texas. <laughs> my father was from Kyle, Texas. My mother was from Bryan, Texas. My mother went to Houston Tilliston College in Austin, Texas. Are you with me? So when I was growing up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I was raised like I was from a small town in Texas. I had to go to Sunday school and church every Sunday. And my mom would volunteer me for everything in the church as a young person, whether I wanted to do it or not. I started singing in the choir at the age of three. And while persons in Cambridge, Massachusetts were eating food of the North like corned beef and cabbage and canned vegetables, I was eating chili and fresh vegetables and everything made from scratch. Are you with me this morning? But the deeper reality of my upbringing was, that, uh, was what was instilled within my soul. I was raised Baptist and accepted Christ at 12 years old. I was taught about kindness and love and speaking to people and I better say please and thank you. Forgiveness and the importance of having a prayer life, reading the Bible, going to church, and the importance of developing a devoted, dedicated, and deliberate relationship with the Lord. <clears throat> and when I went astray, how many of you ever been astray? It was the training up of a child in the way he or she should go. When he or she old gets old, he or she will not depart from it. And that training called my name and brought me back into the arms of Jesus. And yet on today, we are in a social and racial and economic and spiritual quagmire. After all we have gone through as a people on today, we are faced with the realities that some of us may have thought would be reasonably resolved by now. But we see now we are experiencing the effect and the effect of unresolved issues that plagues this country. And when I think of what happened to our sister Sandra Bland four years ago, just a little, over, a little over 220 miles away and a little over three hours from Dallas in the investigating video that was finally emerged on May 7th of this year. And finally what we felt and sensed was going on, we see now that it was true. And when I think of all the women and men whose lives have been treated uh, and threatened unfairly, and when I think of the unnecessary and untimely deaths of, the, deaths of the school shootings and the increased number of young people who not, do not have, don't even see their future, I've had to go to the Lord in faith for myself, seeking resolve and peace of mind in my sanctified spirit and soul. But I thank God this morning on this Woman's Day Sunday, St. Luke Community United Methodist Church for the word of God that speaks and soothes the soul and spirit in the time of need and in the time of trouble. I'm so glad that in these days that we live in, in the midst and in the middle of trouble and turmoil and tragedy and the test of our faith, that we all experience there is a God that assures us that we are hashtag not forgotten. God knows your and my name. 
in your text once again we are encouraged by the word of God and whatever and wherever we may find ourselves in the faith and the places that makes us wonder and waver in the faith this Old Testament text written by the major prophet Isaiah speaks to the future plans of the people of Israel. This Old Testament text written by the major prophet Isaiah speaks then and speaks now what God has done in the past and what he is capable and able to do always in the future. God informs us in this text this woman's day mourning his capabilities throughout history and that God is still God and has the power to do anything but fail and that his capabilities and power is beyond our understanding and our experiences God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts there are times when uh, the Lord allows things to happen to his people Go to the book of Job and you'll read about him. God is the one who is responsible for the turn of events in history. And in chapter 42 and verse number 9, before we land in the key text, God calls for the assembly of all the nations and all the people while they were in pre-exile times. Cyrus the Persian conqueror is rising to power. You with me this morning? Nation after nation has succumbed to his control. And in verse number 54 of the 41st chapter, the people of Israel asked the question, who has done this? and who carried it through in other words who has allowed us to be in exile and be uh, controlled by Cyrus uh, the answer came forth I the Lord the first of them and with the last I am he in other words the Lord was saying it was him who has made himself known <clears throat> to the people of Israel he alone is the one responsible for the turn of events in history God goes on to assure the people of Israel to not worry about their enemies and in verse number 9 of chapter 42 Jesus is introduced as the one who will filled with will be, be filled with God's spirit and will come to save and that there will be a time when the former things are to pass and new things will spring forth. In other words, to embrace the fullness of your woman's day text in chapter 43, we must understand what the Lord was saying and in assuring his people in chapter 42. And that was that the troubles, the trials, the tragedies, the tests that they have had to experience and endure will not last forever. God goes on to assure the people of Israel to not worry about her enemies. And, in verse, and he said in verses 12 and 13, though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. In other words, they will disappear. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not. There will be a shift and a change. It may look like the enemy has the upper hand right now. But if you will just wait a while. And as we land on your woman's day text this morning in chapter 43, the prophet transitions the reader from the past to the future. And he says, but now. <clears throat> the major prophet transitions us with the conjunction, but now and takes us from one reality into the next reality. The major prophet Isaiah transitions us from the troubles, the trials, the tests, the tensions, the turmoil, turmoil and the tragedies to what it means to be in a true love relationship with God and God's people. And that the God that they served and the God that we serve is Jehovah. He is God Almighty. He is the only one who can and will bring them out and bring us out of the chaos and confusion and into peace and victory. Somebody give God praise right here. He is the only one who can bring us out of all of our concerns. He is the only one who could bring us out of any troubles and trials and tests and tensions and turmoil and tariffs and tragedies. Safe, sane, and sanctified. He is the only one. God transitions 
in the text from the spiritual deterioration of a people of Israel to the redemptive power of a people that he knows and calls them by name. Mm, mm, mm. In spite of their disobedience and the difficulty they were in, God assures them that he will protect them in the time of trouble. In spite of their reality, God in your key text assures them that he would take care of them, that he would do what he had promised because he knows their name and he knows our name. God was making a promise to Israel in biblical history and he's making a promise to us on today and that he is, he is our redeemer and he will not only restore but he will not only rescue them, but he will continue to do the same for us from the captivity and from the enemy. God spoke then to a people in exile. And he speaks to us this woman's day on May 19th, 2019, that in the faith, we can trust God when we uh, were in the right relationship with him through Jesus Christ. Because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus the Christ. We have been bought with a price. And when we say yes to his will and to his way and to his word, hashtag, we're not forgotten. God knows our name. He is the source of our being. We are because he is. He is our God and we are his daughters. And we are his people. He loves us. He has saved us. He's redeemed us. He has brought us from a mighty long way. We exist because of him. We are not in a padded room because of him. We have gifts and talents because of him. He formed us in our mother's womb. He knows every strand of hair on our heads. Women of St. Luke, we are important to him. We are significant because of him. We have resources because of him. We have been chosen and the favor of God is resting on our lives. The Bible said in verse number two, therefore, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walk through the fire, thou shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. NIV says it this way, that the flames will not set you ablaze. It is in these verses related to your woman's season text, the major prophet Isaiah is giving us an example of a concrete reality and a frame of reference in the faith of who God is and what he is capable and able to do now and in the future. Isaiah is prophetically speaking God's promise to his people then and speaking to us today. The word gives us hope in the faith. For faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For the Bible says when thy passes through the waters. I'm Baptist so I'm getting ready to hoop so go with me my brothers. I will be with thee and through the rivers that shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire. Thou shalt not be burned, and neither shall the flames kindle upon thee, or the flames will not set you ablaze. I stand before you this morning, having had, uh, um, oftentimes as many as you, under the sound of my voice, and those who may be streaming, when the waters and the fires of life have come to destroy me, and the Lord has brought me through, I stand before you this morning, having had many times when I did not know if I would make it, but hashtag I'm not forgotten, and God knew my name. When I called on the name of Jesus, I, he answered. I come before you this morning, almost 40 years of marriage in August, and the mother of two married young adults, each having two children. I come before you, a doting grandmother, and I come before you now 37 years in ministry. And I know my 
my sisters and my brothers, you all have your own wins and throughs. For in life and living, there will always be times when problems will come one way or another. Danger will come. Disappointments will come. Trials will come. Troubles will come. Difficult seasons will come. The unexpected and the unwanted and the unmentional will find their way. Body will get sick. Death will knock at the door of life. Young people will rebel. Life will deal an ugly hand. Racism will raise its ugly head. Sexism will let you know it is alive and well. And your faith will be tested and tried. Someone this woman's day needs to be reminded that the God we serve knows our names. And whatever we are dealing with and wherever we find ourselves, right now we will not be staying in the difficult space we're living in. We will not be drowning in the waters and the rivers of our problems or consumed by the raging fires of our difficulties and the realities of the times we live in. Oh, for the God we know who knows our name and he has not forgotten us. The God of our salvation is saying this woman's day that he will never leave us or forsake us. And because of who we are in him, the Bible said in verse number five that we are to fear not. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. We do not panic in these days. We rest in who God is and we secure our faith and our trust in him. Someone may need to know this woman's day Sunday like I needed to know uh, right here and now uh, that not only hashtag uh, you and I are not forgotten and the God of our salvation knows our name but if you know this God of your salvation our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ uh, the Son of the living God uh, the one who was sent through 42 generations transitioned us from Old Testament theology into New Testament theology you will know down in your sanctified soul that the Lord has a hold on us and all things in life our souls belong to him our future is in his hands the Bible said that when we do not do not if we do but when we do have difficulties and problems and we find ourselves in the deep waters of life uh, in the overflowing rivers of life <coughs> in the burning fires of life uh, we will come out of them uh, and we will not be staying in them we will not be drowning in the waters uh, and the rivers of our problems uh, or consumed by the raging fires uh, of our difficulties in fact like Shadrach Meshach and a bandit go will walk out of them won't even smell like smoke in fact there are witnesses in the house this morning that the Lord has done that for you before and he'll do it again he is the same God I said the same God yesterday today and forevermore someone needs to be encouraged this morning and be assured uh, there is nothing too hard for the Lord and he will take you through the Lord will take you through the sickness in your body the Lord will take you through your financial concerns the Lord will take you through your marital issues and family dynamics the Lord like King David will take you through the shadow of death there is a promise and a mandate from heaven through the word of God this morning that we must allow the Lord to speak 
week in these days uh, and the days ahead uh, we must allow the Lord uh, to speak and to encourage us uh, and assure us in the faith that the Lord has promised uh, to bring us through everything uh, I said everything uh, we are facing and will be facing up the road uh, our faith uh, must speak to our very soul uh, and assure us that when we trust God uh, Brennan Manning in his book Ruthless Trust says uh, our ruthless trust uh, ultimately comes down to this uh, and that is our faith uh, in the person of Jesus and our hope is in his promise uh, in spite of all disconcerting appearances uh, we must stand down the difficulties of life and death uh, without nervousness and anticipate resurrection uh, solely because Jesus has said you have my word on it uh, and those of us uh, who know him mm -hmm, for ourselves uh, as Lord and Savior we are his daughters uh, he is and our sons uh, we believe in the resurrection says uh, we are precious in his sight uh, he is with us uh, Jesus will bring us through uh, through because of what he went through uh, on that old rugged cross uh, Jesus went through the suffering and pain <laughs> Jesus went through them hammering the nails in his hands and feet Jesus went through them pressing a crown of thorns upon his brow Jesus went through them hoisting them up on an old rugged cross and the gravity ripping his skin they pierced him in the side more blood came gushing out of his side Jesus hung on that cross uh, in an agonizing and relentless pain uh, he uttered the seven last words he was ridiculed and spat upon he was mocked and humiliated and challenged to save himself uh, and on that day uh, over 2019 years ago he took on the sins of the world uh, from the beginning of time until the end of time and for the first time uh, the Son of God was separated from his father and he gave up the Holy Ghost uh, just as he promised uh, victory over death and sin and the waters and the rivers and the fires of life that sometimes seem impossible Jesus the Christ the son of the living God I withstood the test and went through death all Friday night all day Saturday but early I said early on Easter Sunday morning he got up from the grave with all power in his hand our assurance our victory rest in Jesus is resurrecting with all power and we know that all things are working together for the good of them who are called according to his purpose for like Mary Magdalene and John 20 16 Jesus called her by her name in these technological times pastor that we live in we can be consumed by social media Facebook and Twitter and Googling and Instagram and texting and Snapchat uh -huh, for these are the times we live in streaming has been replaced by some and preferred by others some don't see the necessary walking into the house of God but I don't know about you I need to feel the presence of God I need to feel his power I need to feel his might. I want the Lord to know my name like he knew Esther's name, like he knew Ruth and Naomi's name, like he knew Hagar Hannah's name, like he knew Abigail and Anna's name, like he knew Dorcas and Lydia's name, like he knew Mary and Magdalene and Joanna's name, like he knew the woman who was raped before they were put in the belly of the slave ships, like he knew the woman in the fields working in the heat of day, like the woman that was in the big house, abused and misused, uh, like you knew the name of Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth, like you knew the name of Mary McLeod Bethune, 
Fannie Lou Hamer, like he knew the names of Madison C. Walker and Daisy Bates, like he knew the name of Barbara Jordan and Shirley Chisholm, like he knew the names of Dr. Dorothy Height and Dr. Maya Angelou, like he knew the name of Rosa Parks and Dr. Coretta Scott King, like they knew the name of Michelle Obama, when they go down and low, we go high, know my name, how you open doors for the first time in history that Miss America, USA, Miss Teenager, yes, a racially charged bigotry country, yet they were the first black women in all three categories. Know my name, like you knew the name of my big mama in Bryan, Texas. Know our names, like you knew the names of our great grandmothers and our big mamas and our nanas and our aunties. Know our name, know our name, like you knew my mother's name. Know our name, know our name, like you knew my grandmother's name. Continue the legacy of faith. Know our names, Lord, like the name of Sandra Bam. Know our names, Lord, and keep on walking with us. Keep on talking with us. Keep on telling us uh, that we are your own. Uh, know our names, Lord. Uh, and keep on comforting us uh, and counseling us. Uh, and keep on knowing our name. And keep on uh, amazing us uh, and calling us uh, your friend. Jesus, uh, keep on knowing our names. And we'll keep on trusting, putting our faith in you. Uh, stand on your word. Uh, that when we walk uh, through the fires uh, of life, no fire uh, can burn us. Uh, when we walk uh, through the waters of life, we will not drown. Uh, when we are faced uh, with the battles of life, uh, we will not turn away from you. When uh, the mountains of life uh, like that, then we will not turn around. Jesus, uh, know our names. Uh, to continue to hold our hands. And we will walk uh, in our victory because of your Holy Ghost uh, power within us. Giants uh, will not defeat us. No fire uh, will consume us. No battle uh, can turn us because Jesus holds our hand. We are hashtag not forgotten. God knows our names. Come on and give him some praise right here. Come on and give it to him. If you know that you know that you know. He knows your name. Stand all over the church. I know he knows my name because there have been times, my brother, when I wanted to throw in the towel because the reality, pastor, of sexism in the church is alive and well. But because I know he called my name and I answered his call, I come boldly before the throne of grace. And every time I mount a pulpit, I know that I'm on an assignment from God. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it in a way except for him to get glory. So pastor, I thank you for inviting me. I hardly leave my pulpit on Sunday morning. But I heard that the Lord said to come. Pastor has given me permission to open the doors of the church. The invitation is given. If you're not saved from the balcony to the floor. If you never accepted Christ. If you've never joined a church. To be connected and in fellowship with the church. I suggest to you this blessed anointed church that God has placed here in Dallas, Texas, St. Luke Community United Methodist Church. The doors of God's is open this morning. Pastor's here to take your hand. God is here to take your heart. If there's anyone here that needs to come, 
Someone might be saying to themselves, you know, I'm going to wait till next Sunday. I want to hear the pastor. I don't know this woman. But you really do know me because my family's from Texas. I might be your cousin. You don't even know. Me. Here's the other reason why. Do you know this week is not promised to us? This evening, tomorrow is not promised to us. So if there's someone here that needs to get saved and need to join the church, we invite you to make that decision. Is there someone that needs to come? I know your name. Yeah, I know my name. Call my name. God bless you. with even the words to form to say God come to me and rescue me God we ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to bless us with that person that says yes I do need prayer the altar is open oh how he comforts me can't nobody hold you like Jesus and oh Jesus Christ to you to let you know that he hasn't forgotten your name. You might be feeling like you're about to drown and sink, but guess what? God can be with you and he will be with you through the waters of life. I'm we offer so Jesus Christ to you right now. That I can have a conversation you sing that with us. again because they drifted away from God's word. But we offer Christ to you right now. You know my name. You know my name. Sing it with us please. And I'm so thankful. As a rededication and a commitment to God's word. To our trying That God. you haven't forgotten about me Jesus. You know, you know my name. Oh, let's give the Lord 
some praise for that mighty word.